Hey guys, Green Eyed Guide here. So for today's video, we're going to be reviewing this product, which is Swish for Energy. And we are going to go through the ingredient list. And I'm going to share some of the things that I've found by researching some of these ingredients and also share some of the more credible websites, websites that I trust for when I'm coming across ingredients or chemicals or compounds that I've never heard of before. So these sites that I'm about to share with you are good references to add to your favorites list for when you're looking at a new supplement or a new food product, and there's something in the ingredients list that you can or can't pronounce um, that you want to learn a little bit more about. So, so let's go through the ingredient list. Okay, so the very first ingredient is purified water. It's probably not a surprise there. At least it's not alcohol or something like that something that you would find in mouthwash, right? So the second ingredient is monk fruit extract. And usually that is one of the alternative sweeteners that beverages and supplements use. It's either stevia or monk fruit. Those are the two really popular sweeteners right now, the natural sweeteners. Monk fruit has more of a tropical taste, whereas stevia can sometimes leave people with this metallic aftertaste. So I personally prefer monk fruit to stevia, but I prefer either one of those to things like Ace K or sucralose. So I'm glad they're using a natural sweetener, but <laughs> it's not sweet enough for my personal taste. I'm just, I have a sweet tooth, so I actually prefer things to be a little sweeter. Um, this product isn't that sweet. It's got kind of a cooling feeling, which overshadows any sweetness of any kind, but you are supposed to spit it out and not swallow it. So I guess it's good that it's not too sweet, but um, I would prefer it would be a little sweeter. So maybe increase the monk fruit just a little bit, but that's just, you know, my personal opinion. So the next ingredient in this ingredient list is polysorbate 20. Now, polysorbate 20 is a surfactant, which is something that's active on the surface, hence the name surfactant. It's active on the surface between an oil and a water. So when you have multiple things in here, and we're going to go through the rest of this list, but remember the first ingredient was water, and there's a couple other ingredients in here that are not water friendly, you're going to need something like a mediator to keep the oil ingredients and the water ingredients together. Um, even organizations like the Environmental Working Group, which you might know them, you might know EWG from the Dirty Dozen list. So a lot of people are not crazy fans of EWG because their Dirty Dozen list sometimes creates unnecessary fear in certain people's opinions, but even organizations like EWG rate polysorbate 20 as a low risk ingredient. So if they're saying that it's not a concern, that is another clue for you that it's okay that this is in the ingredient list. And remember, this is not a product you're gonna swallow anyways, just keep that in mind. The next ingredient we have on this list is xylitol. Xylitol is a sugar alcohol that has a slight cooling effect. And this cooling effect is something that Swish for Energy really likes to advertise. It's, I mean, this is a mouthwash, so you do kind of want that refreshing sensation. Sugar alcohols are really popular in sugar-free gums. So you might see this ingredient in other products. The next ingredient on our list is caffeine. Now, this is supposed to be an energy product. It's supposed to give you energy. So where is that energy coming from? The caffeine, duh. Um, but something that I don't like is that this product doesn't say how much caffeine is on there. You'd actually have to go to the website itself to see how much caffeine is in this product. Remember, this is not 
something that you're swallowing, but you will absorb some of the caffeine beneath the tongue. So the amount of caffeine in this product, according to the website, is 72 milligrams, which is a very, very weak coffee at Starbucks. 80 milligrams to 160 milligrams. That's the range of your typical coffee, depending on what type of beans you use, what type of brewing method you use. But 80 milligrams is how much is in Red Bulls, how much is in V8. It's about how much is in a tall cup, a tall mocha or a tall latte at Starbucks. So 72 milligrams, maybe some of that you're absorbing. It's not exactly clear how much, depending on your swishing technique. The next ingredient we have here is sodium citrate. So according to foodinsight.org, which is one of my favorite websites, sodium citrate is used in many types of food to control acidity and stability. It aids in emulsification. That's the oil and water interaction we talked about before. And sodium citrate also helps, uh, it improves rehydration. So basically it's salt. It's a form of salt that's in there. The next ingredient we have is polyox in 12 WSR. Let me read that again. Polyox in 12 K WSR. So this is one of those chemical sounding ingredients. Oh my gosh, let's freak out, but don't. So a little bit of research and you can learn that this ingredient is not at all uncommon. In fact, according to Dow Chemical Answer Center, this polyox polymer ingredient is part of a personal care line. So it's a foam enhancer. Remember, this is a mouthwash. So you kind of want a little bit of foaming action, a little bit. Uh, the most important thing is that this ingredient has low toxicity if swallowed. So that's another important thing to remember if you're putting something in your mouth, you want to make sure if you accidentally swallow it, is it going to hurt you? No. The next ingredient that we have here is methone glycerin acetal. So this is a methanol derivative, sorry, menthol. Menthol is really popular for the cooling sensation. And again, this is something that Swish is promoting for their mouthwash. They want to give you this cooling, refreshing sensation. So this methone glycerin acetal is one of those great ingredients that will help you get that cooling, refreshing sensation. So again, if we look at EWG.com, their review of this particular ingredient is that it is low risk overall. It's used as a flavoring agent, refreshing, and a cooling agent. There's another website that I found today called goodguide.com. And like the EWG, they have a list of ingredients. They promote more of this toxic chemical alert that I'm not really fond of. But goodguide.com indicates there are no health concerns with methone glycerin acetal. It's helpful when you're coming across an ingredient you're not familiar with to find two sources. Don't count Wikipedia. Don't count the product's own website. So the last four ingredients we have here are spearmint oil, peppermint oil, vitamin E, and citric acid. The spearmint and peppermint oil are the natural oils or the natural extracts that Swish mentions on their website. They're used for the cooling sensation that you get with this, this uh, energy wash. And vitamin E and citric acid are both commonly used as preservatives to help make sure that this formula, which is not refrigerated, will stay shelf stable. So that is all of the ingredients in Swish Energy. I uh, hope you learned a little bit more on some of the good resources that you can use when you are confronted with ingredients that you are not familiar with. I encourage you to look at caffeineinformer.com, uh, johncoupland.tumblr.com, and compoundchem.com. These websites can help you become more comfortable with the ingredients in your food. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to greeneyedguide.com or follow me on Twitter at greeneyedguide. 
Um, and I'll try and post more videos about interpreting ingredients in foods and beverages and supplements. I'm really about, you know, teach a man to fish. So I'm going to try and post more how-to articles. So stay tuned for that. Hopefully you enjoyed watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.